Madam Chair, I'm pleased to introduce uh, Curtis Dubay, who is a Senior Policy Analyst for the Heritage Foundation, where he specializes in tax issues. Uh, before coming to Heritage, uh, Mr. Dubay was a Senior Associate with PricewaterhouseCoopers. Uh, previously, he served as Senior Economist with the Tax Foundation, and he has done research on a wide range of tax issues, including income tax, sales tax, capital gains, dividends, and corporate tax. Uh, welcome to the committee. <coughs> Madam Chairwoman. Ranking Member Graves, members of the committee, thank you for the opportunity to testify on what can be done through federal tax policy to help small businesses. My name is Curtis Dubay. I'm a tax economist at the Heritage Foundation, a nonprofit research organization based in Washington, D.C., with over 650,000 members nationwide and growing rapidly. The views I express in this testimony are my own and should not be construed as representing any official position of the Heritage Foundation. Many small businesses are struggling to survive as economic recovery remains precarious. There is much the federal government can do to help them, mostly by allowing the recovery to continue without the threat of punitive new taxes and burdensome new regulations. Eliminate these threats, and small businesses will then thrive as the recovery quickens its pace. Unfortunately, Congress is threatening to do the opposite in four ways. The first threat is the scheduled increase of income tax rates. On January 1, 2011, the top two income tax rates will rise from 33% and 35% to 36% and 39.6%. According to the Treasury Department, the 8% of small businesses that pay the highest two tax rates earn 72% of all small business income and already pay 82% of all income taxes paid by small businesses. Higher tax rates on these most productive small businesses would drain the businesses of cash flow, the lifeblood of any business, and would diminish the incentives to grow and add new workers. Instead of raising these rates, at the very least, Congress should drop its plan to increase the top, top, top tax rates on small businesses and make permanent, permanent the current law tax rates for all taxpayers. This would be the best stimulus for the economy to date. The second threat is the impending increase of, t of taxes on capital. Under current law, the tax rate on capital gains will increase to 20% and that on dividends will increase to 39.6% on January 1, 2011. Congress should at the very least hold these rates at 15% and make permanent President Obama's sensible plan to provide, to provide immediate small business expensing of all capital purchases. The third threat is the planned increase of the death tax. The death tax returns to life in full force on January 1, 2011. Despite the common misconception that the death tax impacts only wealthy estates, economists now generally agree that the death tax, that the de that the death tax is actually a tax on capital because of its impact on businesses and workers. The death tax is a drag on America's small businesses, destroys jobs, and lowers wages while raising little revenue. As such, Congress should kill the death tax once and for all to remove an unfair burden from the backs of American small businesses and their workers. The fourth threat is the burden of new regulation. A little notice provision added to the new health care law will harass small businesses with, with new paperwork. Section 9006 of the new law requires businesses to issue 1099s whenever they do more than $600 of business with another entity. Small businesses will now have to issue reams and reams of new forms to the IRS. While large businesses can absorb the cost of this new bureaucracy, with their large legal and accounting teams, the new requirements will inundate small businesses with an avalanche of paperwork. The paperwork will burden, burden will force small businesses to redirect scarce resources from productive activities that could grow the business, add jobs, and pay higher wages to complying with onerous new reporting requirements. Now, many in Congress would prefer to offer targeted tax credits to specific small businesses instead of keeping income tax rates and taxes on capital low for all small businesses. But targeted tax cuts are no substitute. Of course the businesses that receive the targeted tax cuts will benefit. But Congress should not be the arbiter of which businesses succeed and which do not. Its track record of making such choices is far from exemplary. And further efforts to manipulate the market based on the whims of the moment could actually prevent breakthroughs that would benefit the economy and the United States. Thank you, and I look forward to your questions. 